So we're looking at a chi-squared for a mono hybrid cross. And we have some corn cobs. These are great to use because each one of these individual little corn, sweet corn kernels is a result of an individual fertilization. So these in effect are showing you what the, the new plants uh, are going to be. So they're great, great for genetics. Uh, what cross have we got here? These are our parents and we have a purple times a entirely yellow. So these are homo zygous or pure breeding. The phenotypes, purple and yellow. The genotypes of these pure breeding plants. Well, we need to give the gene a letter. What letter shall we give it? Well, when we cross these, we get all purple, all purple plants. So the dominant is purple. So I'm going to give that a big P for the dominant allele and little p for the recessive allele. When we cross these, what gametes can we have? Well, only a big P from the purple and a little p from the yellow. And when these added together, big P, little p, and that is our F1 generation, our first filial generation. And these are purple. It is hetero zygous, meaning that the alleles are not the same. Then what have they done? They have itself this. So they've taken this, this cob and they have selfed it. So crossed it with another very similar one. Another heterozygous purple. Gametes. Well, ah, we've got a choice now. We could have big P or little p. Again, we could have big P or little p. We need a Punnett square now. Traditionally, we, we put the kind of males and females there, although it doesn't really matter in this case. We put the gametes into here, big P or a little p, big p and a little p. Add them together. Traditionally we, we put the big letter first. Then we identify, so these are, our, these are our genotypes. What are our phenotypes? Our phenotypes are purple, anything that's got that dominant allele, purple and purple and the recessive it has to be homozygous for it to be expressed and that's going to be our yellow so our ratio would be one to three purples to one yellow three purple to one yellow and that's our classic you know, Mendelian um, monohybrid cross. But we've got, how many plants have we got here? So we've actually got quite a few. So do they, does this example follow our 3 to 1 ratio of our, in our F2, our second filial generation? Well, how many, how many yellow, how many purple? Well, there's no, no other option than to count these now. So what's the total? Well, uh, how many do we get in a row? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 19 in a row and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the total number that we've got is 8 times by 19. The total is 
is 152. Then how many yellows have we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. So we've got 37 yellow. The others must be purple, they're all purple, so minus 37, 115 of those. So does that fit into our 3 to 1 ratio? I'm not quite, not quite sure. Um, 152 divided by 4, so it should be 38, but it's got, we only counted 37, so it's not quite right, is it? We need to do a chi-squared to, to check that. Um, so we're going to do a chi squared. This is the table you get in your in your lab book, and we need a chi squared test, a null hypothesis, um, there is like I can't spell it, is is no difference. between our observed numbers and what we'd expect from our ratio. So our, our null hypothesis saying, yeah, 37, you know, we want 38, but there's only 37. It's near enough, it, it's fine. So that's our kind of null hypothesis there. All we need to do is fill in a fill in a table. Phenotypes. Well, we've got purple and yellow. Our observed numbers. Well, we had how many purple? One one five. How many yellow? Thirty seven. How many did we expect? Well, if we've got one hundred and fifty two. One hundred and fifty two, and three to one ratio. So let's divide that into four. That should be 38. So we should get 38 yellow times that by 3 and 114 purple. So we should get those numbers. So just again, what you do is we we've got four different four different possible you know, genotypes, even though those two are the same, but for, yeah, we are, our Punnett square has got four four boxes in. And so we divide our 152 by that 4 and then times it by whatever the ratio is. And so times the yellow by 1 times the purple by, by 3. And then we just, uh, here's the, here's our little, that is a chi squared. Uh, this means sum of, and then O's and E's are just our observed and expected so some of you might be able to do this you know, all, all at once, but generally we try and put this in a table. O minus E, 115 minus 114, that's 1. 37 minus 38, well that's minus 1. O minus E squared, this gets rid of any minuses. So that's 1 and that's 1, so minus 1 times minus 1 is 1. O minus E squared divided by E, so 1 divided by 114. 1 divided by 114 is a small number, 0 0.00877. And then for the second one, we've got 1 divided by 38. That's wrong. 1 divided by 38 should be another small number. There we are, 0 0.0263. So that takes care of this entire bit over here and we just need to add them all together. So 0 0.00877 plus 0 0.0263, which is, so our chi squared is 0 0.035. I've rounded these numbers a little bit 
and if it's close later on when we're looking at comparing our critical values then we, we might want to do it again but that's probably close enough for now. You're given a table and this is a, a table of critical values and we're going to compare our chi-squared against one of these numbers and we need to know how to how to select these numbers. We use a probability of 0 0.05 so not 0 0.05 is the same as our 95% confidence so we're 95% confident if we use P is 0.05 you can't be 100% confident there's always going to be some experimental error and um, so we arbitrarily select that that's you know the equivalent of a 1 in 20 chance that there's a, a screw up every now and again which is which is okay so we're going to use this and we, we're not going to use these other two degrees of freedom so the degrees of freedom is the number of classes minus one where are our classes well that's our phenotypes there so these are our classes so we've got two of those minus one so we've got one so our number of classes and so we are then using this number here as our critical value the rules are let's find a bit of space to uh, to write this if chi squared is greater than our critical value then reject null hypothesis so if chi squared which is in this case chi squared is 0.035 is greater than our critical value which is 3.84 so we can say here it's not it's not greater is it it's smaller so we have to accept our null hypothesis so our chi squared is not greater than 3.84 our critical value so we have to accept our null hypothesis so we have to accept that there is no difference between the observed and the expected there's no real significant difference between our observed and expected any difference is due to chance and so really we can say yes our numbers do fit into that ratio there is a three to one ratio between our corn cobs which is probably what we thought all along